All right, testing, testing. Okay, well, and away we go. Let's get rid of this text. All right. So here we are. It's Tuesday night baseball here. Tuesday night baseball. We got a matchup today here in between the Cleveland Indians and the Toronto Blue Jays. Uh, before we actually get into playing the game, though, um, before we get into that, I've gonna cover a few things with you guys about my new setup here. As you can tell, we've got a new setup here. We have got a new setup. So, um, the reason uh, I got this new setup actually is because uh, Espo Strat Baseball. If you're not familiar with this channel, I definitely highly, highly recommend you go over to YouTube and check it out. That's E S P O Strat Baseball. Do a search or a link to him off of my channel as well. I just came across his channel recently. And we've been communicating back and forth, and he had uh, messaged me about my setup here in Payoff Pitch Baseball, and he was interested in it. So we emailed back and forth a little bit just to get uh, some information and uh, kind of talk about my setup and stuff. And after thinking about it and discussing it with him uh, some different options, he's, he's interested in uh, setting it up. So what I'm going to do is just kind of go over my new setup. Uh, and uh, let everyone know, especially Espo out there, uh, Strat Baseball, if um, if he's interested in doing this. All right, so obviously kind of the main change is, um, you know, here's the way it's been. is kind of uh, we've had, you know, the payoff pitch document. We've had it up. We look at the players. Um you know, kind of his player's card, we roll the dice, we compare them, blah, 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 we get the result, I take it and I input it into the uh, ball score here, and um, it's been pretty good. The only disadvantage is obviously scrolling up and down, back and forth, finding all the player cards and everything. So, I mean, it takes a little bit of time to do that for each player, unless, of course, you have, like, Adam Jones hitting and then Chris Davis. Like, if Adam Jones is hitting and then you got to scroll down here to find Nolan Reimold and then back up. You know, that does take a little time and can be a little bit annoying and stuff. Uh, so, you know, after thinking about it, um, I decided that I was going to change the format a little bit to make it a little bit better and make it a little more easier. So I'm going to show you what I did. Uh, so here's my folder or my directory here that has all my files in it. You can see I've just got a bazillion of files in there. Some of them are test things that we tried in the beginning and different, you know, just different setups. Like at one point we had uh, like the Boston, the three player cards in a row and that worked okay, but it was, you know, a lot of extra work ahead of time. So what I decided to do after working with Expo today on everything is try and come up with a slightly better format. So you can see here we have the game between Cleveland and Toronto. So what I ended up doing was actually um, doing some pre-game setup for a while. And it does take me a lot of time to set this up to begin with. But once it's done, I think it'll be done pretty permanently. And I won't have to do that all the time. So let's show you what I've done and how that is going to affect everything. So what I ended up doing was taking both Cleveland and Toronto... Uh, let's see if I can find either one of these teams here in our sheet. Uh, do, 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 Texas, Oakland, Houston, Houston, Oakland, Toronto. Oh, here's Toronto. Okay. So what I ended up doing was just taking each of the players. And I actually got on a, uh, a website here. And I'll show you this because it might be interesting if you're going to try this at home yourself. Um, what I did was I just did a search for screen shot software. And then I'm giving this light shot software. And I'm going to show you how this works. It's pretty good. You just download it, download it for Windows, uh, it takes a screenshot, blah, 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 etc., etc. This actually saved me a lot of time of cut 
copying and pasting and cutting and everything. Good evening, Stratomatic Delaware's in the house. Just warming up some payoff pitch himself. He is going to be trying payoff pitch on his uh, channel. He's going to be uh, uploading some videos on that. He's um, been watching here on our channel. Yay, yay for us to help him out. We've been kind of... Uh, Showing him the ropes, and now he's going to be doing some payoff pitch for you guys out there. So definitely check out strat o Delaware on YouTube. Do a search for uh, his channel. You can link to his channel from my channel as well, since we're subscriber buddies now. So anyways, back to what we were doing here. White shot, uh, you know how I used to, uh, what I'd have to do is I'd, I would um, copy this, and then I would take it into... Microsoft Paint, and I would paste it in there, and then I would crop it, and I would resize it. I would save. It was such a pain in the butt. So, so what I ended up doing was getting this Light Shot program. Uh, it's a quick download. Uh, it was free. I didn't have to pay anything for it. And basically, what I do now is, and I'll show you how quick this is. Um, I'm actually going to do a different team because I've already done all these guys. But uh, you'll see the format here in just a second. So oh, there's Cleveland. So I did them as well. So I don't need to do them. Let's go on to the next team here. Uh, we'll do, uh, say, yeah, Seattle Mariners. Since I, I know I haven't done them. Uh, so now that I have that light shot installed, all I have to do is hit my print screen button. And you notice it kind of grays out my... My desktop. Uh, it might be hard for you guys on YouTube to see. But basically, it's asking me to select an area. So for, like, Justin Smoke, what I can do is I can just highlight his area like this. Boof. And it brings up these nice little menus here where you can just automatically upload it to the cloud. You can put it on your social network. You can put it on Google. You can print it out, whatever. But what I'm interested in doing is saving it. I click on the Save Options. And this is what comes up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new folder. We're going to call this uh, Seattle, R-I-N-E-R, 2013, right? And now that I'm in the Seattle Mariners folder, I just switch over to a JPEG. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to write the player's name in there, Justin Smoke. And then after his name, I'm going to put what position he plays. So that way it might be easier for me if I'm looking for a first baseman or whatever. I can just pop that in there, and then I hit the save button. Oof. Now, if we just happen to go back to my little folder here, you'll notice I have the Seattle Mariners. There's this folder. I can now click on it, and there's this card already to go. All right. So that was the first thing I did. Now... Once I've taken all of, and I didn't take all the players, what I did was I just took like the starting players or the players that played a lot and uh, for Cleveland and Toronto, specifically I'm talking about them, um, because I, wanted, I don't want to do all the teams and then try this format, which will take a long pre-setup time. I don't want to do that. Uh, each team took me only about maybe 20 minutes to do, but what I ended up doing was didn't, doing all the starting players for today's game and then I did every single one of the pitchers so for Cleveland I did all their pitchers which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 pitchers and then like 10 of their players that I have ready to go and I put them into a new folder inside of my directory and yes, I'm going through this kind of slow, just to because I know that Espo um, Strat Baseball is interested in this setup, and so I'm going through it a little slow for you guys who've seen this before, but he might not have seen this. So I'm kind of explaining it because he might want to try to do this himself. Uh, so what I did was I created a Cleveland folder, and as you can see, I basically put in all of the players by name, and then like for example, here's um, Brian Shaw. He is a right-handed um, short reliever. So, you know, here is Carlos Santana. He's a catcher. Mark Zembrinski is a left-handed short reliever, et cetera, et cetera. So I got all of them, all the pitchers and all the starting lineup done for Cleveland. And then I thought, well, what I to do is use these cards to my advantage. So what I ended up doing was taking them. I created another folder. I just called it lineup, whatever you want to call it is fine. And basically, um, inside of lineup, what I ended up doing was taking all the players, 
for the team. Michael Bourne, Azdrubal Cabrera, Jason Kipnis, Mark Schwisser, Michael Brantley, Carlos Santana, Mark Reynolds, Lonnie Chaston, and Drew Stubbs. And I just took those cards that I already had and I copied them into this folder. Now, the way Windows works is it'll default to um, name convention. So it'll put them alphabetically, which doesn't help me one bit. Not at all. So what I ended up doing was just right-clicking each of them and then renaming them and then putting their position, or not their position, their batting order in. So, you know, I right-clicked and renamed and I put a one here, which put him first. That's Drupal Cabrera, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, blah, blah, blah. So again, I just took all my Cleveland players, took the starting nine that are playing this game, created a new folder. I can't use this folder, and I'll show you why here in just a second. So I just created another folder, copied them in there, and Beatles Eternal is in the house. I'm just going over my new setup, Beatles. Um, and then once I copied them in there, I just put their batting order numbers in front. Now, what does that give me? What does that allow me to do? Well, I'm going to show you this here. If we look at, um, if we look at our Cleveland, I'm actually just going to close out of these windows so that you don't get confused here. If I look at Cleveland, what I do is I just go into lineup and I go to their first player and I can pop them up. And there they are. And I'm going to move that just out of, out of the way. So there's Michael Bourne. It's, he batted first, as you can see right here. Here's the actual lineup from today's game. And now that I've got them all numbered in that one folder, I can just hit the arrow key, and it'll go to the next, and it'll go to the next, and it'll go to the next. And I can just cycle through their players by doing that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Or not ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I can actually see up here, uh, it might be a real hard for you guys to see, but it'll actually tell me the name of the file. Right here is number nine. Uh, so I can actually, I won't need to use the PDF. And uh, this way I can get from one player to the next player really quickly. Boom, boom. And I think that's going to speed things up. As I mentioned, using the PDS is great. It's just a problem of scrolling up and down, back and forth, blah, blah, blah. So uh, we're going to try this format. I did the same thing with Toronto as well. If we go into, uh, if we go in here, we go into Toronto, same thing. I can go in their lineups, click on their player number one, and they are ready to go. So there's the Toronto lineup. Jose Reyes batting first, Melky Bear batting second, Jose Bautista batting third, Edward and Carnacion batting fourth, Adam Wynn batting fifth, JP Arciabara batting sixth, Colby Rathmus seventh, Marci Arzuna, Arzuna batting eighth, and Emilio Bonafuco batting ninth. Boom. And you'll see that that'll also match up with the lineup here. Uh, the other advantage of having these here is I don't need to, um, I have my bowl score ready to go right here, and I don't need to worry about, uh, you know, alt tabbing between them or clicking on it and all that. So, anyways, that is going to be the setup. We're going to try it out and see how fast. I think it's going to go a lot faster. I do believe that. Um, plus, I can scroll through the list if I need to find out. Oh, let's see. Who is their, um, who is their shortstop? Oh, it's uh, Cabrera, and I can see all of his stats really quickly. So um, we'll see how this goes for today. I think this is going to be a good setup. I used something similar-ish to this before. I didn't have the numbering system, which will basically put them all in lineup order. But um, I think it will speed the game up. I'm definitely looking... To get games going nice and fast so uh, you know keep the action going keep things flowing a little bit faster for you guys uh, I am using a program here um, called rock and roll it's a dice program um, and turn it's uh, the reason I use this one uh, well it's free so uh, the other thing is I can actually go in and I can tell it how many dice I want to roll and all that Plus, I can also turn the sound on or off, so I can, you know, talk while this is actually rolling in the background. A lot of programs don't, 
Uh, Beatles Eternally says, wow, you've really streamlined it. He likes it. So we're going to find out if it can get a little bit faster. Um, it does take me extra time ahead of time. But next time, you know, Cleveland goes to play whoever they play next after they play Toronto, um, I already have... I already have a lot of it done, so it won't be that much, you know, like, you know, here's Cleveland. Here's all their pitchers. The only thing I'll have to do is add in a few players that might not have started this game. Um, and then, you know, changing their lineups, you know. Let's say that, let's say the next game, uh, Jason Kipnis bats first instead of batting third. Well, what I'll do is I'll just end up taking, you know, the nine players copying and pasting them in here and then resetting the lineup. That only takes, you know, like 30 seconds tops to do all that. I mean, uh, if you're, you know, work with computers at all, like myself, or if you're familiar, you shouldn't have any problems. So that's kind of the setup. Um, again, the reason I kind of started this is working with Espo. We've been kind of emailing back and forth for the day and, and, uh, you know, he's got me thinking about my setup because he said he was really interested. He liked my setup. And um, and so, you know, I, he was asking me questions about it and, and stuff. And so I got to thinking about, you know, is there a better way? Is there a way to streamline things? And one of the, one of the, um, the problems or the questions he had was basically, man, it's going to be a pain in the ass to scroll up and down those PDFs all the time. I said, yeah, it is a pain in the ass. I don't like that part of it. So I thought about ways to make it different. So let's try it out and see what we do and see how we go. So Michael Bourne here, I wish I had more room. I would like to keep these side by side. I mean, I could, but then we're covering up this. So obviously we're only using, you know, one team at a time. Um, oh, and the last thing I did, <laughs> not done yet, last thing I did was I actually took all of the charts from the um, Mike McAllister's in the house. Hello, Mike. How are you? Uh, so the other thing I did was I took a lot of the charts that were in the book, which, you know, you're all pretty familiar with if you've been watching my payoff pitch here recently. And uh, just made them into images, so I, I can actually just um, just go in like this. Anytime we have a check, I can just simply okay. Well, what's check are we using? We're using defensive check. There it is. Boom. Here's all the basically all the most important charts that I think we need. Hopefully, I didn't forget any of them. And we also have a R Rogers Center check. So most important thing. Wheelhouse, doesn't matter if you're left or righty, if it's a 74 or higher, then we'll look at this again. If it's less, if it's higher than 74, we know it's an in play. Uh, if it's in the mid 70s, we'll come back and check on this. Then, of course, we have our hit and error range, range there as well. I don't know if it's better to, for me to keep this down at the bottom of my screen or on my other computer or just minimize it. I'm not sure yet. I'll have to, I have to really uh, look at that, but uh, we are ready to begin. Thanks, Mike McAllister, Beatles Eternally, Stratomatic Delaware, and all you other viewers out there. Thank you for joining me. We got us a game between the Toronto Blue Jays here at Rogers Center and the visiting team, the Cleveland Indians. This is again, 2013 season. And away we go. Here's the lineup. Michael Bourne, as Drew Cabrera, Jason Kipnis, Nick Swisher, Michael Brantley, Carlos Santana, Mark Reynolds, Lonnie Chasen, Drew Stubbs. And away we go. Michael Bourne, he'll be facing off against R.A. Dickey. Dickey is the starting pitching today for the Toronto Blue Jays. And away we go. That's an 8.93. 8 is patient. Patient 93 against our right-hander. 93 is a G4. So we have us... Oops, let's try that again. A G... Oops. Cancel that. All right. There we go. On to Abzdrubal Cabrera. All I have to do is click on this, hit the arrow key. It'll go to the next card, and we are ready to go to the next player, Beals Eternally, ID Jester. Have you thought of sharing your idea with Payoff Pitch? They might pay you for my work. 
Oh, that would be nice, but no, no, I haven't thought about sharing my idea with them. Um, I haven't really done anything. They kind of, you know, Ben MacGyver and just kind of, um, you know, for you guys that are too young, MacGyver was a TV show where this guy would make like a nuclear missile out of like a roll of tape and a pencil. So that's all I've basically done is just trying to find a way to set it up so that I can actually play. As Drew Cabrera versus R.A. Dickey, one out here in the top of the fifth. No, top of the first. Whoa. Talking is hard tonight. Uh, that's a 5. 32. 5 is in play. In play. 32 is going to be a pop-up to first base. 2A. Jason Kipnis. That is a lot quicker. I will tell you that right now. Jason Kipnis. That's a 9.77. That's a tough 77. That is going to be an F8. Boom. We're on to Jose Reyes leading off for Toronto. That was one quick. Wow. I'm, I like that. I can tell right now I can like that. Justin Matterson coming in to pitch for Cleveland here. He was uh, started 29 games during the season. He had uh, 193 innings, 156 hits, 13 home runs, 76 walks, and 195 strikeouts. And away we go here in the bottom of the first. The home team's up to bat. Jose Reyes, Justin Matherson. It was a 5-13. 5 is tough, tough 13. That's going to be a strikeout. That brings up Milky Cabrera. Wow, that's so quick. Just going to the next hitter like that. Oh, I'm going to like that. Melky Cabrera, left fielder against Dustin Matrison. Does take me a lot of time to get it set up like this, but it will make the games go by really fast. One out here in the bottom of the first. Melky Cabrera looking at the pitch. It's a 6.43. Six is patient. And 43 is going to be a single. So Melky Cabrera on... Whoop. Uh... Cancel. Cancel. I think I hit it too many times. My bad. Jose Bautista. Do up. Here in the bottom of the first. Runner on first. Milky Cabrera. Oop, let me go to his card. Um, Jose Bautista. There he is. Thank you. Oh, I can just use the arrow keys to go b to scroll through the players. That's going to be so much good. It's so much good. Jose Bautista, runner on first. Justin Matterson, the windup in the pitch. Here it comes. Fastball down the middle. That is a... Slide that out. That's a 596. Five is tough. Tough 96. Fly ball to center field. I'm sorry, left field. Cabrera is going to stay on first. And we're going to bring up Edward Encarnacion. Edward Encarnacion, 272 hitter against right-handers. Dustin Matterson looking for that third out. Cabrera on it first, taking the lead. Here we go. Wind up in the pitch. That's a 722. That's an in play 22. That's a single. Single for Edward. Going first to second is Milky Cabrera on the in play hit. I'm sorry, there are two outs. He will take another base. So. Ah, it should be runners on the corners. I could undo that, I believe, but it could freak out the game. Let's see if Adam Wynn gets a hit. If he does, we'll just have to keep that in mind. So runners on the corners, ignore this for right this second. I should have remembered there was two outs. I'm trying to go quick, keep things interesting for you guys. Adam Wynn is up, lefty versus righty. Batted 309 versus right-handers in 2013. Let's see what he gets. He gets him a 229. Two is in play. In play 29 is going to be a single. And every runner is going to get two bases on this. So we know Cabrera, which he was at third. He's going home, so he's going to score. Runner on first is going to go to third. And one run in for Toronto. Runners are on the corners now, as they should be. And go to the next hitter, J.P. Arciabara against Justin Matherson. Running into some trouble here. Running into some trouble in the first, bottom of the first. Runner still on the corner, two outs. Can he get that all-important third out? Here we go. Wind up in the pitch. 
another two 18. That's an in play 18, and that's another single, and that is four singles on the board already for Toronto. They have a meeting on the mound as that scores another run. Still runners on the corners for Colby Rasmus. And the hot hitting Toronto Blue Jays here open the season with the bats. Justin Matterson waits. Lined up in the pitch. Here it comes. It's a 9-33. 9-33. That's a patient. Patient 33 is going to be a walk. And he walks in a run. No, I'm sorry. Walks the bases loaded. Walks the bases loaded for Marcer Erzuris. Erzuris. Yeah, that guy. We'll just call him Mr. M.I. Anyways, still uh, bases loaded, two outs. Can they get this all-important last out of the inning? 11 54. 11 is tough. Tough 54. Tough 5 4 is going to end up being an F7. So that is going to end it. And mercifully, Cleveland gets out of the first inning, only giving up two runs. We click on this. We drag this up. And Jason uh, Kipnis was up last. So it's Nick Swisher's time up. R.A. Dickey get, has himself a 2 0 lead going into the top of the first. You can advance the runner, hit the blue button. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a good idea. Could have done that. Could have done that. All right, R.A. Dickey versus Nick Swisher. Let's see if Cleveland can fight back here, the Indians. That's a 9-22. 9 is tough. Tough 22 against the right-hander is a strikeout. That brings up Michael Brantley. Michael Brantley, left-hander. Playing left field today for the Indians. Here it is. Wind up in the pitch. The dice are bouncing around 8. 8-16. Eight, 8 is patient. Patient 16. And there we go. We got a walk there by Michael Brantley. He's a B stealer. Let's look at who's catching today. Uh, his arm is a three, so it'd be a B3 if you look at our charts here. A B3 for stealing. A B3 is going to be here, 27 and 99. It is a success. Uh, hold rating of six in R.A. Dickey. That's pretty respectable. They're going to try for it. Michael uh, Brantley is going to try to get the lead here. So we need a six or less for the stole or for the attempted steal. That is a six. 33. Let's look at the chart. 33 says it's B3. 33 is going to be a steal. Oops. Oops. Runner steals second base. There we go. We can just get this chart out of the way now for Michael Brantley. Runner on second. One out here in the top of the second. Away we go. R.A. Dickey versus Michael Brantley. That's a 5.72. 5 is in play. 72 is going to be a G6. Is it a double play? We need a 5 or less for a double play. Let's see. It is a 3. It's a ground ball double play. That is going to be a 6.43 double play. Where is it? There it is. 6-4-3 double play. Oh, there's already two outs. I guess it's not a double play. My bad. It's just going to be a uh, G6. Here we go. Going to the bottom of the second. Switch this. Move this down. And we're ready to go. We have uh, Emilio Bonifuco. Right there he is. Two up. Switch hitting Bonifuco against Justin Matherson. Wind up in the pitch. Here it comes. 6-33. Patient 33. That is going to be a single. So Bonifuco leads the uh, the hit parade for Toronto here. Uh, his stealing is a B. Cleveland's catcher is Santana. He's got an arm of four. So that's a B4. 
Let's look at that chart again. B4. That's even better. That is going to be even better. Uh, he's got a hold rating of 6, so he is going to try and steal second here. Let's see. Uh, that is a 4, actually, so he does uh, 422. So he does get the jump and takes off. 22 is enough for the steal. If it would have been um, a uh, B3 like the other runner, he would have been out. He would have been caught. But being faster, he's got himself a stolen base. Oh, wait a minute. What is this? Whoa, 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 whoa. What did I do? I thought that was a C2, right? No, 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 no. Ignore this. Ignore this. I think I hit the wrong button. Bye. All right. You're here. C2. Runner. Oh, that's right. It's uh, runner on first is first is caught stealing. Here we are. Runner on first steals. That's what I meant to do. No runner on first. Yes, there is. That guy right there. Oh, man, don't tell me I screwed it up. Runner on first. Oh, he hates down as a caught stealing. How does... Uh, we can undo caught stealing. There we go. Undo that. There we go. Let's try that again, my friend. Sorry about that. Runner first steals. There we go. All righty. That brings up Jose Reyes here now. Wow, my bad. I hit the wrong button. Yes, I did. I see that. Thanks. All right, so runner on second for Jose Reyes against Justin Masterson. And is he going to get the early hook? Man, he's been off, off his game. That's a 521. That's a tough, tough 21. He's going to be a strikeout. Oh, I do need to click on that. Strikeout. That brings up Milky Cabrera, second time up. Got himself a single first time up. Runner still on second, one out. Wind up in the pitch. 8.93. 8 is tough. Tough 93 is going to be a fly ball to right field. And Bonifuco. That was off of a tough. He will stay. Brings up Bautista. Jose Bautista flied out to left his first time up. Wind up in the pitch. Here he comes. Runner still on his second. Single will score <clears throat> with two outs. 773. Seven's in play. 73 is too high. That's going to be an F8. If you're scoring at home after two innings, it's 2 nothing Toronto. I am liking this setup. I think I'm liking this setup. It does take some, like I said, some pre-game work, but um, makes the game go by that much faster. So, do up Mark Reynolds there. Mark Reynolds versus R.A. Dickey. Dickey is allowed no hits so far. Hitless in the first two innings. Mark Reynolds versus R.A. Dickey. The wind-up <clears throat> and the pitch. Here it comes. That is a... Five, <clears throat> five forty-three in play, in play forty-three, forty-three. That's gonna be a pop-up, too short. One away, brings up Wani Chessenhall. Wani Chessenhall, left-hander, playing third base for Cleveland. Wind up in the pitch, R.A. Dickey. That's a six fifty-six. So six is tough. 56 is going to be a single. So R.A. Dickey does give up his first hit of the game. He's a B stealer. Um, Drew Stubbs is due up. Be a B3. Still a good chance of stealing. They do need to get the six hold. So we'll go ahead and um, assume he's going to try and take off. If he can get the jump. Beatles Eternal, he says it seems very smooth. It does seem very smooth. 
And we got us a 5, and the hold was a 6, so he is off, but he only rolled an 18. That means he's caught stealing. If we look at our chart, B3, 18 falls in the caught. So caught stealing. This time I can put down runner on first is caught stealing. There it is. Throw him out. Cleveland getting a little bit too aggressive. Drew Stubbs, do up. They had a good chance of making it, but just couldn't do it. Drew Stubbs with two outs now. Nobody on. That is a 787. Seven is in play. 87 is going to be too high. That's a G6. And after two and a half complete, still two nothing Jays. That brings up Edward Encarnacion. We got a single in the first. Wind up in the pitch by Matterson. That is an 8. 49. 8 is tough. Tough 49. Ooh, just outside his range. 49 is going to be a G5. That brings up Adam Wynn, who had a single his first time up. Adam Wynn, 1 for 1 on the season. Wind up in the pitch. Here it comes. 6.78, 6 is patient, patient, 78, just a little bit too much there for an F8. Uh, JP Arena Sabara singled his first time up. Masterson is now uh, getting back into a little bit better groove here in the third inning. As a 571. 5 is tough. Tough 71 is going to be a strikeout. That's going to end the third inning. Going into the fourth inning already, folks. Yeah, this is going along pretty well, my friends. I'm kind of happy with that. Brings up Michael Michael Bourne for the second time here in the fourth inning. Uh, he hit a ground ball the second his first time up. R.A. Dickey's only given up one hit so far. Going in the fourth inning. Wind up in the pitch. Here it comes. 769. In play 69. In play 69 is going to be G6. As Drubal Cabrera popped up to first his first time up. As Drubal Cabrera. Switch hitting. Batting from the left side today. That is a 971. 9 is tough. Tough 71. Again, just outside his range. That is a G6 now. Oops. I do have to remember to click on that. Jason Kipnis, he flied out to center field his first time up. R.A. Right, Dickey pitching a hell of a game so far. He would like to have more than a two-run lead, though. That is an 8.75, 8, patient, 75. Look at that. One outside of Jason Kibnis' range. 75 takes us down here. That's another fly ball to center field that ends the top half of the fourth inning. We're cruising right along here. JP, uh, nope, uh, Colby Rasmus is due up. Walked his first time. Justin Matrison. Matt Masterson. Masterson, I guess is the way to say that. Colby Rasmus. Wind up in the pitch. Here it comes. It's a 388. Tough? 88. 88 is going to be a single for Rasmus. 80, oh, no. 88, sorry. 88 is going to be a ground ball to second. G4 out. All right. That brings up. Marcer Itsuris. Itsuris is up. And he flied to left his first time up. That's going to be a 767. In play, 67. Too high. That's going to be ground ball to short. Ah. That brings up Emilio Bonifuco, the only... Uh, single his first time up in the second inning. Emilio Bonifuco, the second baseman. 
They haven't had any uh, ballparks or any defensive checks or any wheelhouse checks yet. They've all been tough and in play, so interesting. All right, that is a 7-17 in play. And once again, 17, though, that's going to be another single. So Emilio, two for two on the day, brings up Jose Reyes. Emilio stole the base the last time up. He has the B4 rating, and he's going to try and get a jump on Masterson with two outs. What do they got to lose? Let's see if he gets a jump. He's got a six hold, so not a very good chance. Nope. So it's a 10-30. So you still you use the same roll if he doesn't get the hold. You just use whatever the roll is, and you play it out normal. So it's a 10-30. 10 is tough. 30, a tough 30 is going to be a strikeout. So that's going to end it. We're going in the fifth inning. All right, Dickey comes back out after taking a little break there. And I mean a little break because that was a 1-2-3 inning. Here we go, R.A. Dickey. Only giving up one hit on the day. That hit to Wani Chessenhill in the third inning. So, uh, let's see. We need Nick Swisher. Nick Swisher's up. All right, Nicky. Wind up in the pitch. 696. Six is tough. 96 is going to get himself a, um, hmm. I'm going to have to slide that over a little bit more. There we go. Oh, uh, there we are. I wish there wasn't that. I'll have to adjust it so next time there's there's more uh, things. So Nick Swisher flying out to 96. That's an uh, right field, F9. F9, please. Thank you. That brings up Michael Brantley. Michael Brantley uh, walked his first time up in the second inning. And here we go. Brantley versus R.A. Dickey. 741. In play 41 is going to be a pop-up to second base. Two-way here for Carlos Santana. Hit a ground ball to short his first time up. Carlos Santana, switch hitter for the Indians. That is an 8 zero, 8 8 is patient, zero, 8 and he's going to walk. He's going to walk. So Santana, he's a B Raider. Two-way. Um, Mark Reynolds. We'll just let Mark Reynolds hit this time. Carlos Santana, the catcher. On it first. Two away here in the top of the fifth. That's a 6-17. Six, six is tough. 17. Tough 17 is going to be a strikeout. To end the inning, swing and a miss. And that brings up... Um, um, who is up? Milky Cabrera. There we are. Milky Cabrera up. Nice to be able to just slide through the players like that really quickly. Yeah, I'm liking this setup. Justin, it does take some time, like I said, to pre-set up to get everything working for you guys. Melky Cabrera versus Justin Masterson. Cabrera singled in the first and flying out to deep right center, right center field this in the second. And is a 956 patient. 56. Oh, look at that. Milky Cabrera missed it by one. Instead, he flied out. The left field. Jose Bautista. Fight out the left and fight out the right. 0 for 2 on the day. Bautista. That's a 7.30. 7 is in play 30. In play 30 is not good enough. That's going to be a ground ball. Hit back to the pitcher. And Masterson picks it up, throws it to first, two-way. Edward Encarnacion, a single in the first, and a ground ball to third in the third inning. 
two way here in the fifth. We have us a 725. That's in play 25. And all three of the Toronto batters just, just missed. Just missed it. So 25 is going to be a pop-up to the catcher. And it's going to be a pop-up behind the plate, making the catch. And we're going into the sixth inning. Going into the sixth inning. I guess I could maybe squeeze these over a little bit. How, uh, if you're in the chat and you're listening and watching, I do appreciate it. Thanks, everyone, for showing up tonight. I do, do appreciate it. Very much so. Um, so are the cards big enough? Can you like read when I say like it's a 62? Can you actually see the numbers on the cards? I know like like this is a seven. You can see seven. I mean you don't need to see these numbers really well because I mean that's kind of easy part. I figured this was the important part to make that nice and big for you guys to be able to see the numbers. Um, we're going into the top of the sixth inning. If you want to let me know in the chat what you think, Beatles the Journal, he says, yes, I can. Lonnie Chastenhill, the only the only hitter for Cleveland so far today. R.A. Dickey has a one-hit shutout going into the sixth inning. Mark Reynolds, do, um, I'm sorry, Lonnie Chastenhill is due up. There we go. The only hit of the game came off of Chaston Hill, little dribbler back up the middle. That's a 9.55. Nine is tough, tough 55, and Lonnie Chaston Hill has done it again. Lonnie Chaston Hill has done it again. He is a B stealer. If you look at the B ratings, uh, the catcher for Toronto, what was he again? He is an arm of three. That's right. Um, so it's going to be a B3. Still a pretty good chance of making the play. 27 and 99, it's a stolen base. You still need to get the jump, so they will try for it, and we'll see if they get the jump. That is a 965, so that's not within the jump range, so you go to 9 and 65 for Drew Stubbs. 9 is... Tough, tough 65 is going to be a strikeout. That brings up Michael Bourne for the third time today. He's 0 for 2. Ground ball to second, ground ball to short. Michael Bourne. Um, one away. They could try Chasing Hill again. I think they'll just let Bourne hit. His head does have... Um, some good walking ability, so we'll see. Maybe we can get a walk and get him over that way. And it's an 828. 8 is patient. Patient 28, just as I called it. It's like I almost know what I'm doing. That is a walk for Michael Bourne, just like I called it. So we have runners at first and second. R.A. Dickey in a little bit of trouble here. Lonnie Chastenhill gets his second hit of the ball game. And then the walk. They do feel confident keeping R.A. Dickey out there. So. Here we go. As Drupal Cabrera. 0 for 2 on the day. Wind up in the pitch. That is a 6.30. 6 is tough. Tough 30 is going to be a strikeout. So. R.A. Dickey comes right back with. A strikeout. That brings up Nick Swisher, first baseman. A strikeout and a fly ball to right. Two away here. Runners on first and second. Oh, we need uh, Jason Kipnis' his card. And the windup and the pitch. R.A. Dickey. That's a 9.33. 9 is tough, tough 33. And R.A. Dickey. Two strikeouts in the inning. No. As a matter of fact, he's got three strikeouts this inning. And he tells that manager, go have a seat, buddy. I am just fine. And gets him out of the inning. We're going to the bottom of six. Still 2 nothing. All the action happened early. If you come in late, folks, you missed the party so far. 2 nothing. Toronto all happening in the first inning with 
four singles and a walk in that first inning. So due up, Adam Wind, Justin Matherson, he can actually go eight innings if he if we wanted to keep him in there. But let's see if we can get through the six first. Adam Wind, Justin Matherson. Adam Wind, one for two with a single. That is a 764 in play, 64. Not good enough. 64 is going to be a ground ball. Hit too short. Uh, I put second base down, but it doesn't really matter. <clears throat> Hit the wrong button. I forgot to turn my lights on, and now it's getting dark in my room, so it's hard for me to see. J.P. Arena Sabira. Sabata. Justin Matherson. J.P. Arena Sabia. He is uh, one for two with a strikeout and a single in the first. Matherson has actually p pitched well, except for that first inning. And he's a 7.56, 7 in play, 56. That's going to be a fly ball out into right field. Two-way here for Colby Rasmus. Colby Rasmus, lefty. The wind up, here it comes. Curveball, that's a 987. 9 is patient. 87 is too high. That's going to be a ground ball. Hit to second. And we're going into the seventh inning. R.A. Right, Dickey back out on the mill mound already as Matherson is mowing down the Cleveland hitters. Um. So, I guess I should slide that over a little bit. I wish there was a way to, like, can I drag this over? No, I don't think so. Well, anyways, uh, you guys will just have to believe me when I say it. Because <laughs> it'll scroll over to my other screen, which I think is, mm, it'll be all right. All right, anyways, um, who's up? Who's up? Who's up? Whoa, 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 whoa. Cowboy? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to have to make this. Thank you. All right. So this is going to be Nick Swisher's up. Nick Swisher, strikeout in the second and fly ball into a right field in the fifth. 0 for 2, Nick Swisher, R.A. Dickey. Here it comes. That is a 742 sevens in play. In play 42. Not good enough. Ground ball hit down to first. One away. Michael Brantley walked and popped to second. Here comes the pitch. It's a 628. Tough 28. 28 is going to be a double. Nope, I'm sorry, a single, 28, 2 eight. So a single for Michael Brantley. Michael Brantley is a B-stealer with one away. I think they're going to play it safe, and that's Carlos Santana hit. Carlos Santana just let him go. All right, R.A. Dickey gives up his third hit of the game there. It's a nine. I'm going to reroll again because it's caught in the corner, which sometimes it happens in this game. It's a 10 40. 10 ballpark. Oh, finally our first ballpark check. Uh, ballpark 10 40. So that's going to be a wheelhouse check. As you can see, Roger Center, doesn't matter if you're left or right hander, you get less than a 74. It's a wheelhouse check. So wheelhouse check for Carlos Santana. So one to thirty, we got us a tie ball game. One to thirty, we got us a tie ball game. He rolled a ninety-three. So ninety-three, it's going back, back, going, going up against the wall, making the catch is Bautista in right field, robbing. Carlos Santana of a t game tying two run home run. That brings up Mark Reynolds. Two way here 
in the seventh thing. That's why they didn't want to steal. Just in case one got close to the wall. And that one was almost went over. Bautista leaped up and made the catch. Mark Reynolds 0 for 2 with a strikeout and a pop up to short. Here we go. That's an 11 85. 11 is patient, a patient 85. And getting on the inning, R.A. Dickey, grounder to short, over to first, in time by half a step. And we got us a little. Take us out to the ball game as we're hitting the seventh inning stretch. We've only been recording 58 minutes, which is great, first of all, because I spent the first 20 minutes talking about my setup. So really, we're going to get this game done in less than an hour. And that is my goal, is to try and keep these to less than an hour. So I do like this new setup. It's much faster. It does take me some more time to set it up originally, but... Um, I can do that work offline for you guys. That's fine. All right. Coming in for Toronto, Marcier Itzuris. 0 for 2 on the day. Does Matherson stay in? I think mm, we are in the seventh. I think, you know what? Besides that first inning, I mean, 0-0-0-0-0. I wouldn't pull him if I, I don't think it's the Cleveland manager, especially since he's got a fatigue rating of eight, uh, which means he can basically stay out there until the eighth inning. Ah, there he is, Statomatic Delaware, yelling out at the old ball game. So he's going to stay in unless he gives up another hit. I think the manager would probably pull him at that point, but. Let's see what he gets. He gets a 595 is tough, tough 90. Going to be a ground ball. Hits a second. And one away here for Emilio Bonifuco. Two for two for Toronto today with two singles. <sighs> he doesn't even have that good an average, but he's two for two on the day. Justin Matherson is going to stay out there and face Bonifuco. Let's see, can he go three for three? That is a 6.63. Six is patient. Patient 63, not good enough. And they finally get Mr. Bonifuco out. Brings up Jose Reyes. And they're going to leave Matherson in there to try and end the inning. Jose Reyes. That is a 6.83. Six is patient. Patient 83. Doesn't matter. It's going to be a ground ball. Hit to second. Over to first. And we're in the eighth inning. Dickey's coming back out. Normally, he's only got a fatigue of eight. But R.A. Dickey, because he has a shutout going, a three-hit shutout is that, he is going to stay in the game unless he gives up another hit. So we have uh, Lonnie Chassenhill coming out. He is two for two. With two singles, believe it or not. Ken Castro's in the house. Welcome, welcome, Ken Castro. Lonnie Chasson Hill against Ari Dickey. They're going to leave Dickey in, even though Chasson Hill's got his number. Let's see if Dickey can get him out to six outs away. That is a 2 16. 2 is a ballpark. 16, you know what that is. Remember, folks. 74 or less, it's a wheelhouse check. That is a wheelhouse check right there. Ball bark. You check the card. And in this case, 77 or 74 or less is going to be a wheelhouse check. So wheelhouse check, 1 to 34 on the reroll. And Lonnie Chessonhill puts Cleveland on the board. Here comes the roll. It is a 74. So 74. He takes one. Oops. Out. Center field going back. Makes the catch in the warning track. And all the Toronto fans put out a big sigh of relief there. Drew Stubbs is drew up. He is 0 for 2 with a strikeout and a grounder to second. R.A. Dickey, five outs away from a complete game. Can R.A. Dickey do it? 879. Patience, 79. He's got himself another out. 
Uh, that is a uh, fly ball that. Uh, let me just double check. Uh, eight, patient, 79. 79, yep, fly ball to center. Another one out there making the catch. He's four outs away from a complete game for R.A. Dickey and Michael Bourne. Over for two on the day with a walk. Cleveland's offense has not shown up. They've come close. Here we go. New format today, Ken Castro. New format. Hopefully you like it. It's made the game go by really quick and fast. That's an 878 is patient. 70. Patient 70 is not good enough. R.A. Dinky gets out of the eighth. 70 is a ground ball hit to short. G6. Going to the bottom of the eighth inning. And matching them pretty much pitch for pitch. Justin Matterson, who's only gave up one, two, three, four hits in the first inning. It just happens they were single, 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 single. A couple runs scored. But besides that, starting with the second inning, he's only given up two hits the rest of the way. One in the second and one in the fourth. And that is all he has given up. So he's given up six hits. Four of them happen to all be in the first inning. Besides that, he's pitched a hell of a game himself. So we're going to leave uh, Justin Masterson out there, do we? <sighs> Mike McAllister's in the house. Don't count down outs. It will backfire, he says. <laughs> uh, he's only three outs away. Uh, all right, so if you were a Cleveland manager, would you leave him in or would you take him out? Masterson has pitched well. He's only given up two hits since the first inning. Uh, he's had three and outs the last three innings. Or do you bring in a reliever? I think, I think we're going to leave him in there. I think we'll leave him in there unless somebody tells me not to. Melky Cabrera, one for three on the day with a single. Uh, Beatles Eternally says, leave him in. Mike McAllister says, take him out. Uh, I need a deciding. I need someone else. I got Beatles says, leave him in. Mike McAllister says, out. Somebody want to be the deciding factor? Leave it in the chat for me. Should we take him out or leave him in? Uh, no roll, no roll, by the way. Anyone out there? Ken Castro. Stratomatic Delaware. Uh, Ken Castro says, leave him in. All right, that's it. Masterson stays in. Here we go. Melky Cabrera, Justin Masterson, bottom of eighth. Here comes the pitch. Uh-oh, that's a 1249. That's a defense of 49. We get to use our chart for the first time in the day. A defense of 49 is going to be, oh, there it is, 49. 49 is an error check on the second baseman. Error check on the second baseman. So, it's going to be Cleveland's second baseman there. Jason Kipnis, is, he's got an air check of two. So we go back to our little chart here. Two, air check of two. So one to 63 is an error on Jason Kipnis. One to 63. One, here it comes. It's a 0 0. A 0 0 is an automatic reroll. I don't know if you've been with us, but 0 0 is our automatic reroll. It is a 74, so nope. Jason Kipnis comes in and makes the play. No error. So that is a ground ball. Hit to second. No error on the play. Jose Bautista. Um, oops, wrong side, yeah. Jose Bautista 0 for 3 on the day. Jose Bautista. Justin Masterson. That's a 677. 6 is patient. Patient. 
Look at all these numbers he has. He has all the way up to 71, but nope, 77 is the rule. So fly ball into center field for the out. That brings up Edward Encarnacion, one for three on the day with a single. Edward Encarnacion, Justin Messerson just trying to get out of this eighth inning and let it be, let it be, he says. That's a 0-0 zero, zero once again, so we re-roll any 0-0s zero, zero, we re-roll. And here it comes. That's a 4-61, four's ballpark, 61. A ballpark, 61, folks. We know what that is. Anything less than 74 in a ballpark is going to be a wheel check. So 1-59, to and Edward Encarnacion is sent the... Uh, one over the wall. Here it goes. He's got a hold of it. It's going. It's going back, 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 back. And 63. Not gone. As it hits off the wall, ricochets right back to the center fielder who throws it in. And Edward Encarnacion gets himself a single. Adam Lind. One for three with a single. Uh, let's look. He's a bee stealer. Do they try for the steal just in case they can squeeze out another hit? I think they will. He's a B stealer. That's going to be a B. Th B. Uh, catcher arm four. So it's a B4 check. And that happens to be. B4 is right here. So they can get the jump. 18 or higher is a success. So Edward Encarnacion is going for it. He does need to get the jump, though. Masterson with the hold is six. Pretty decent hold. Here we go. He gets the jump on a two and rolls to 43. So that is a stolen base by Edward Encarnacion. Stolen base. Uh, make sure I clicked it. Yep, okay, stolen base. That brings up Adam Wind, one for um, one for three on the day. Adam Wind with the single in the first. So, uh, did they leave Matherson in there with two-way? Runner on second against Adam Wind. I think no, no, no roll, no roll, roll, no roll. They're going to take Matherson out. They're going to bring in a lefty. Adam Wynn does not hit lefties very well. Everyone seems to know that besides me, I guess. So quickly, all we have to do is uh, show you how easy this is now. We just go in. We go into our Cleveland folder. We go into and we find our pitchers. We can look for um, left-handed short reliever here. That's what LSR. So it would be left short reliever. Right-handed uh, SP would be starting pitcher. Right-handed, uh, starting reliever, or I'm sorry, short reliever, starting pitcher, starting pitcher, left-handed, starting pitcher. So we're looking for a left-handed, short reliever. That is, that is, oops, thought I had the game saved on, nope, I didn't. Okay, that's fine. Um, we're going to use, we're going to use... Yeah, I'll just give me a second here. Let me see who actually came in in the real game, because I like to use players that came in in the real game. So, all uh, right. So, just give me a second here as we pull out the schedule results. All uh, right, and the box score here it is. And let's see if Cleveland used any left-handers. So, Matherson started. They came in with um, a righty, Vinny, a righty, Chris Perez, and a righty. So they brought in three righties. So we're going to, we're not going to bring in a righty. The reason we're doing this is to bring in a lefty. So they have two short left relievers. Nick Hagedone and Mark Ruspensky. So we're going to bring in Mark Ruskabensky. So, uh, where are we? We are here against Adam Wind. We have us. New pitcher. 
That is right there. He's going to be batting. Does not bat. Okay, there we go. All right. So Adam Lynn against Mark Zaparinsky. Something like close to that anyways. Let's see if we can get that all-important third out. Adam Wynn does not do well against lefties, so... Tough up the middle. Good choice. Stratomatic Delaware. All right. Here we go. Wind up in the pitch. Can he get that out? 5-0-2. 5 is patient. Patient 0-2 against the lefty. Adam Wynn with the walk. That brings runners at first and second for JP. JP. They're going to leave Mark Zaparinsky in there and try and get out JP Arcia Barra. There we go. Wind up in the pitch. That is an 11 67. That's a ballpark 67. We know what that is. That is a wheelhouse check against lefties, though. So 1 to 34, JP Arciabara has cranked one out into deep center field and given Toronto those all important cushion going into the top of the ninth. Here it is, the wind up, and it is a 19. And JP Arena Sabia has cranked one into left center field going over the wall. And the crowd erupts as we have us a home run, three-run shot. And Mark Zeperinsky comes in and doesn't do the job. The insurance runs are on the board. Boom, chucka, chucka. Stratomatic Delaware says, well, I might as well leave him in now. Colby Rasmus against Mark Zaparinsky. That is a 788. That's a tough 88. And that is, once again, just outside his tough area. Um, tough 88. Yep, 88's going to be a G4. And Toronto goes into the ninth inning with a nice, comfortable 5 to nothing lead. They're going to leave in. R.A. Dickey trying to get the complete game shut out here to start the season. Due up for Cleveland as Drupal Cabrera. There he is. As Drupal Cabrera, Jason Kipnis, and Nick Swisher. All right, see if Dickey can get these last three outs. R.A. Dickey as Drupal Cabrera. Hitless on the day. And it's an 11 59. 11 is patient. Patient 59 against the righty. And that's going to be a fly ball. Hit in the left field, making the catch. Two outs away. Jason Kipnis. Jason Kipnis uh, hitless on the day as well. Strikeout in the six. All right, Dickey, two outs away. I know I'm not supposed to be counting them down. 7-26. Seven, <clears throat> seven's in play. 26, and that's a single. A single for Jason Kipnis. Only the fourth hit given up. That brings up Michael Brantley. Oh, oh, oh. Did I mess something up? No, that brings up Nick Swisher. Sorry. Yeah, it does bring up Nick Swisher. My bad. All right, runner on first. One away. Let's see if uh, R.A. Dick can get this complete game. Here we go. It's a 9.55. 9 is tough. Tough 55. Nick Swisher. <sighs> yeah, 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 yeah. Nick Swisher. Strike one. Strike two. Strike three. You're out of there. One out away for Michael Brantley. And R.A. Dickey has a shutout, four-hit shutout to show for it here for Toronto. And the wind-up at the pitch. Here it comes. Michael Brantley trying to keep things alive. That is a 6-14. 6 is tough. 
Tough 14. Michael Brantley doesn't strike out a lot. Only 1 to 23, but a 14. And that's ball game as Michael Brantley whiffs on another R.A. Dick Key. Strike one, strike two, strike three, and that's it. That is it. Winning pitcher is definitely R.A. Dickey. Loser today is going to be Matherson. No save. And that, my friends, is ball game there. Toronto takes out Cleveland 5 nothing. Uh, let's look at the box score if we can. There's the box score. Only hits for Cleveland on the day. One by Kipnis, one by Brantley, two by Chasson Hill. Everyone else was Ofer. Ofer. There was seven strikeouts, three walks for Cleveland. Toronto hits by Cabrera, one. Encarnacion, two. Lind, one. Two by Ar Arena Sabria. And two by Bonifuco. A total of two, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight hits. Um, two walks and four strikeouts for your Toronto Blue Jays. If you look at the pitching lineups, Matherson, a respectable Seven and two thirds gave up seven hits, three runs, three earns, one walk, four strikeouts, 3.52 ERA. But that cannot undo R.A. Dickey with the nine innings, four hits, no runs, no earned runs, three walks, seven strikeout performance. And at definitely player of the game, R.A. Dickey, who leads Toronto to the first victory of the season. For those of you interested, the final score from the real life game was. Dun, 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 dun. Cleveland 4, the Toronto Blue Jays 1. So, in an upset here, the Toronto Blue Jays shut out the Cleveland Indians 5 0. And I want to thank everyone for joining me tonight. So leave your thoughts, comments, suggestions below if you're watching this on YouTube later. But. Um, Definitely think we got a good setup going here. Just need to adjust a few minor things. Like get rid of these boxes so I can keep more things in the on the screen here. Seemed like it played a lot faster. We've only been going one hour and 20 minutes. <laughs> so, and I spent the first 20 minutes um, of the broadcast just going over how I set things up. So, we got this game done in about an hour, maybe less. I highly, highly... You know, think it's a, I think it's a good setup. I think we got something going here. I want to thank uh, Mike McAllister, Stratomatic Delaware, Beatles Eternally. Um, let's see, we had, uh, um, who else? Uh, Ken Castro is here. Um, who else? Matt Cornelius came by for a little bit. And everyone else that stopped in tonight, I want to say thank you once again for spending a little bit of your time with me. Hope you guys like the new format. I think it's going to work out well. I just want to make a few minor adjustments, but uh, appreciate everyone stopping in just to spend a little bit of time with me. Everyone have a wonderful, wonderful evening. Once again, from Rogers Center in Toronto, Canada, final score, Cleveland 0, Toronto 5. See you guys next time.